All right, everyone, welcome back to the last part of this series. Uh, today we're going to look at fields. Fields, how you do them normally in Cinema 4D. Basically, this video is about fading objects in and out, and that's kind of it. So let's jump right into Houdini. Let's see, let's recap for a second and get our geometry spreadsheet up again. And as we said in previous tutorials, it's all about editing attributes in your geometry spreadsheet or in your points. And Today we're going to expand on that. So the way you work with fields is by transferring attributes from one object to another. So this is best shown, so let's just get straight to it. Let's create an attribute create. And here we set our p scale value. Now it disappears because the value is zero. But if we up the value to one, we are back at where we were before. So let's create a sphere and set it to primitive. So now when we select the sphere, you can see we have only one point. And if we put it in polygon modes, we get lots of points, but we want one point for now. And append a transform so we can move it a bit easier with our uniform handle tool. What we want to do here is we want to create a p-scale as well, but here we want to change the value. So actually I think it's better if this one is one and the grid one is zero. Now when we go back to a copy to points, all the cubes have disappeared. So basically what we want to do now is we want to transfer the p-scale value from the sphere to our grid. And the way we do that is with an attribute transfer. So first one is the grid, and then second one is supposed to transfer it from. And what you can see now, we get all points back, uh, which seems strange maybe, but the thing is you set your values in the conditions. So automatically it just grabs all the attributes and transfers it from one to another. But if we go to the conditions, we can down the distance threshold, and now you can see it's fading in. But it's a bit harsh, so what we can do is we can up the blend width, and now you can see we get a nicer kind of transition. And now we can grab our transform and we can just animate in these values. And that's kind of all there is to it in a nutshell. So what you can do as well to visualize things a bit better, because now our sphere, I hope you can see this on the YouTube recording, but our sphere is like this, where our circle is a lot bigger. So you can link this as well. So you can grab the radius x value and copy the parameter. And here you can say paste relative reference. So we just put in whatever is the size of the sphere. And obviously now we have a massive distance threshold. But now if you put that down, you can see we get exactly the sphere, which might be something you want. It might be something you don't want. But let's go back for a second and up the blend width a bit. And what we can do is if we make the distance threshold really small, we can change this to polygons. So now we have all these points in our sphere and it will transfer the p scale attribute from all these points to the grid. Now you can see we still got quite a lot. Maybe let's up the scale a bit. And now you can see we're transferring this, but our resolution is a bit coarse. So here you can see there's one point here. So here you can see it's getting transferred quite well. And Here's a point to get it transfer quite well. And in the middle, it's a bit meh. So let's just up the resolution. Now you can see we get a better transfer. You can see this quite a lot with these infection type of effects, you know? They scale like a line and they kind of like ripple out. Then this is a way to do it. And another way is something we dove in a bit in the last tutorial. Let's get rid of the attribute transfer for now. Just drag it out. If we see our attribute create, you know, it's very simple, but we can just animate the values as well to make it go in and out. But we can also do that with a attribute noise. So drop down attribute noise, set its type of to float because we're using P skill. And now we get all these values. And if we scroll down, basically here you have minimum and maximum values. So if you animate the maximum to zero, there's nothing. You can animate the minimum as well so let's just create a quick animation. Let's set our frame rate to 25 FPS and save as default, always work in 25. And set a keyframe by alt clicking. And then maybe one second further, we get this to one. Alt click to confirm the keyframe. And then maybe oh, around frame 10, we animate this one. Frame 35, we set this to one. Everything is just one. <laughs> and let's see how that looks. I would probably mess with those splines a bit more, but <laughs> that, that's up to you, however you want it. But yeah, that's another way to 
animate these things in. And you can actually also uh, combine this with our attribute transfer. So if we set this back to primitive again, and then transfer the P scale, then this should multiply. And now you can see, we can just multiply our value. So we can have still have random bits, but yeah, it will be multiplied with our noise. So you get a less kind of uniform look. And especially if you set this to 0.1 or you use a low frequency noise, you can get some like cool animations. So yeah, that's another way to do it. And that's about it. It's a really, really simple technique, but nonetheless very important for lots of the work we do. And yeah, with these tutorials, I just really wanted to show that it's not that hard to transition from Cinema 4D to Houdini. And kind of once you know your basic workflows, your kind of bread and butter kind of techniques you usually use, then it becomes a lot easier to dive into more complex topics. Also I created a guide on Notion to just be able to scroll through these concepts like once more. So I created all these uh, little videos about how you do specific type of things. So here it's fields with randomness. And there's all these basic things as well, like what are the different operators? How does the context work? How do you work with nodes? What's the UI like? You know, the MoGraph type of things. So it's all in there. I laid down some common attributes as well. And as I go along and I see new things, I'll keep this updated. So click in the link on the description to get that. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.